Do you want to know how to have a sweet new year? Like all things Jewish, it's all about the food. Rosh Hashanah Foods, this is how we do it. Just as the brain is not simply the top of the body, but it is the central system of the body, and whatever happens in the brain is affects what happens to the body, so also whatever we can accomplish on Rosh Hashanah, whatever gets done on Rosh Hashanah, will have important ramifications for the rest of the year. For this reason, there are certain things that we do or don't do on Rosh Hashanah. For instance, it's written that we should not sleep during the day on Rosh Hashanah because this, in a sense, sleeps away the good fortune for the year. It even relates to food, to the types of food that we eat on Rosh Hashanah. There is a custom not to eat sharp foods, bitter foods, sour foods on Rosh Hashanah, although it's just it's symbolic, but even symbolism is important on Rosh Hashanah. In fact, the Sephardic traditions in this are much more elaborate and colorful than the Ashkenazic traditions. Um, and they have an entire Seder on Rosh Hashanah with many, many different types of foods. A meal like this, um, couscous, especially with all the vegetables, it's pretty and it's, and it's festive. And so this is the type of food we would have at any um, festive occasion or a special holiday, obviously, like uh, Rosh Hashanah, um, but this type of food, couscous, again, because it's the grains, it's plentiful, it's it's uh, it's uh, multitudes of of all good things. We would have it uh, for holidays. We would have it for um, for uh, moving into a new home, for when a baby's born. It's really a, a festive meal because typically it does take a lot of time to prepare. Um, so what we do is we have the couscous and we combine it with the seven vegetables and this is something that again the seven new vegetables of the new year and uh, part of that of course are the chickpeas and then on there we have some turnip and we have some oh that's the butternut squash and we have some zucchini and we have some sweet potato and some yam this, you know, really is beautiful walking into, into a Sephardic home, Rosh Hashanah, and seeing a table set with all these foods. Um, and, and everything has a reason. These, these are um, our customs or traditions and foods that we do make blessings on, and they all represent something. Um, but essentially, it's all about a sweet, plentiful, um, new and wonderful year. Okay, so it's customary to eat certain foods on Rosh Hashanah, and usually what we'll start with are dates. And, of course, because they're very sweet and for a sweet year, and we will eat ours just plain sometimes. Some people will dip them in the sesame seeds, so it's a sweet and plentiful year. So that would be one of the things that we would have. Oh, okay. <laughs> so everything I'm going to introduce you, you'll be our taste tester. <laughs> so next we would have the pomegranate seeds. And, of course, the pomegranate seeds, or the pomegranate represents the, um, you know, apparently there are 613 seeds, which represent the mitzvot, the commandments. And so we eat these to try and fulfill the obligation that we are going to try and, and maintain or keep as many commandments and good deeds as we can for the coming year. So that's a, a very special food that I think we all eat, Ashkenazi and Sephardim, but I saw that. <laughs> So that's a leek, <laughs> and this we make a, a blessing on, and this is consume. We're supposed to eat this to request the disbursement of God's enemies. So it's really to keep away any bad luck. So that's why we would have, why we would eat the leek, and we make a bracha on that as well. And what are these silly looking things over here? Well, these are gourds, and this is, um, you know, they're ugly. <laughs> <laughs> and and we make blessings on these. They're they're tough and rough on the outside and and you cook them and they end up being soft and sweet which is really all these squash are part of the gourd family and this really is uh you make a blessing on these for protection do we eat them not these no these what we'll end up doing with actually because these particular ones are really decorative and so we'll make a blessing on them and then as soon as the holidays are over or this part of the holidays over and we start getting our sukkah ready we hang them from the sukkah in the Ashkenazic traditions, it's limited to a number of different foods, which I will describe. We eat, we dip our challah 
rather than in salt like the rest of the year, we dip it in honey so that we will have a sweet year. We take, in addition to that, we also take an apple and dip it into honey, and we say a prayer at that time, may it be the will of Hashem, that our new year will be renewed for us in a sweet way. And of course, yay, apples and honey, which is not just a Sephardic tradition, of course, but it is a Jewish tradition. And no Rosh Hashanah table is complete without it. And this, of course, we have for a very sweet, sweet new sweet. year. <laughs> exactly. There are also certain types of foods which the word which is used to describe that food has a double meaning. And it, some of them are in Hebrew, some of them are in other languages, in local languages. So uh, carrots, which in Yiddish mean merin, which means to increase. So we eat carrots so that our, our merits will increase. And so on, many different examples. So let's talk about this uh, full fish we have on the table. Yes. Well, that fish, um, really, we have the whole fish, but t typically what we would have is just the head of the fish or just that. Um, what you'll have very often at a Sephardic table, and we just couldn't seem to find one in time to show this or get this seder ready, was the head of a lamb, which is also equally as appetizing to look at. Uh, equally? <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> I'm certainly the, the whole thing would be better. But nonetheless, uh, this represents that we should always be at the head of, uh, and, and never at the tail. That's why we eat the head of the fish or the head of a, of a, a ram or a lamb. What do you mean that we should be at the head and not the tail? That we should um, really be a, a nation of leaders and not followers. And we should and just, you know, always be at the forefront of whatever it is that we're doing. So I suggest we partake in some. Yeah. Careful. I'm Shoshana Israel, and that's how we do it. <laughs> <laughs> Happy New Year!